visit. Nice. We have a nice weather here. You have nice weather? Good. After many rains, we got nice weather here. It's supposed to, we're having a snowstorm tonight. Do you mind being, was that piece of nature to wash it? Okay, who should we invite? Would it be an alien, right? We would invite either Lakesh or Pentium or um, Takur. I, I would say maybe Pentium would be most neutral, but, but, but whoever is more suitable for this audience, I would say. Okay. How, how much time have you got? I, I will give you an hour. Okay, great. Cause, okay. Do you just want me to go ahead and start then? You have no preliminary questions? Um, I guess it's a new audience. Some of them are pretty advanced and some of them are very new to that. So that's all. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim, just to Hi. let you know. Should I turn to others? Does anyone want to be off camera? It's nice to see all of you, but a surprise as well. So all right. <laughs> a surprise, but it's nice. So, all right. Um, they heard who you asked oh. for, so I'll see who's there. And you said, uh, someone had a, can you ask a question? Uh, the question is for you. Have you ever tried LSD? <laughs> Have I ever tried what? LSD? No, I haven't. Okay, that, that's awesome. <laughs> no. But I've been offered it. I just refused it. <laughs> I have tried marijuana. And <laughs> like that. I like mint. Mint is great. Uh, not anything stronger than that, really. I think, I think we're ready, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, I will uh, do a small meditation and we'll see who comes. Greetings, this is Pen Tim. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Is there a specific reason you wanted to speak to me? All right, I, I invite the questions from the audience, whoever is ready. Ah, there are other people there, I see. All right, how about you first introduce which kind of alien do, are you? I'm a Yuhil. I am the second in command on the ship here around the United States. We are closer to Vermont right now, but there are two other ships also in the United States North American continent. Um, I am these dudes' right hand man, which means to say the assistant captain of the ship. So therefore, I do many things and wear many hats. And I uh, do many errands, and if Pentim cannot uh, attend a meeting, then I will attend it for him. What kind of meetings then does, Pen, uh, does this do? Uh, oh, there's, oh, there's galactic meetings. There's meetings with even the Octorian Council and those people that are in Gurkfiknir, but other Octorian Councils, the Orion Council, um, Many things. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. 
Can you speak no. Russian, please? Can you speak Russian? No, I can't. If I put the uh, translator on Russian, it could translate it into Russian. However, that is, this ship is not set up for Russian. But we could get it easily. Oh, it will be 2017 year. What? Uh, what are your um, predictions on 2017? There are several things that we are looking at. Um, the world condition is actually slightly better than it was before your elections. The elections is not good for the United States, but it will be good for the world. Let me explain. The United States will be accused of many things. However, they realize that they cannot trust this man. He is too much of a loose cannon, as they call him, and he will cause the world to be very cautious of whatever they say and want to do with him. So it actually will very, be very helpful for the entire world because they will um, be very cautious and they will be cautious spending as well. And so that will help economics in, on your planet. However, it is possible for him to bring uh, very harsh times on your side of the world if he uh, speaks out of turn too many times. Uh, Laura? If uh, someone uh, applies for a visit to a ship and then uh, uh, is refused, would you give a reason why would you refuse? Well, right now, let me see. Let me tell you, there are many different species doing many different kinds of programs. <clears throat> Our particular program is one that uh, is very attached to all the world governments. So therefore, we will do what they ask us to do so that we may maintain a friendly atmosphere with them and also help them to trust us. But there are some species that will actually uh, take you off planet. Our uh, Gurkfiknir alliance will not. The governments have said that it is not permitted and so we will not do it unless they permit it. No more questions. No. Okay, I just want to ask. My mom is really sick right now and I really worry about that. Uh, can you tell me what is going to happen? With She is very sick? Yeah. I do not know who she is. Can you tell me her name? What? Ina, Ina. Oh, Celia. Yes. And what is wrong with her? Uh, what it, <clears throat> well, she got gangrene. Oh, she, she got gangrene toes and uh, she is 88 and she has diabetes and uh, so uh, right now she has a fever and we don't know like she is in a hospital and she's kind of in and out but or worse and so we don't know like what's going on and how should I behave if they ask me what to do it sounds like she has many different things going on what we could do is scan her body and see exactly what is going on and then send her an infusion that might help some of these things, mostly physical ailments. We, and we can help emotional ailments as well with increased serotonin and natural chemicals that are uh, natural to the human body. However, is she a believer that we exist or anything of this nature? Because, let me tell you this, we can send an infusion, 
but the body may reject it if they do if the body does not realize what it is we can send something into the back into the angel chakra but unless that they are aware of what it is for and why it has been sent your body's subconscious anybody's subconscious would reject it without knowing what it is if you are expecting it then you will accept it if you believe that it will be helpful but sometimes the body does not realize what is coming and so it will reject these infusions we would love to help her does she believe in these kinds of things она верит можно ей рассказать об этом I, I don't know exactly. I would say probably yes, but we are not like, because we are Russians, we don't yes, have it I like, yeah, like I we're really going to the charge. All I have to know, well, we will try to do an infusion anyway. I will do a scan and we will try to do the infusion. But let me tell you this. If she has a belief system that will reject this, then it will reject it. But if she actually believes that this can help her, the body will accept it and it will help her. Okay. We do not force anything upon humans. It goes by their belief systems and um, their, the fear of the unknown and many things that humans have. We do not force ourselves on humans, but we do help them as if we can. We have been able to help many humans with many different things, such as migraine, headaches, backaches, uh, uh, thyroid problems, and things of this nature, even heart disease and things of this nature. But they have to accept the infusions. So if you would like us to try, we will do that. Yeah, please. I can reach her DNA from yours, and we can find her. Thank you. Any more questions? I certainly hope that she is open to it because it will help her mentally and physically. It will also help to relax her and put her in a, a better state for future healing as well. I'm trying to do Reiki for her and mm -hmm. she feels better, but uh, it's, she's kind of again better worse better worse but looks like she when when i started doing that for her even she started moving and and i asked her what she's feeling and she's like she said like i feel that i'm uh, you know it's just like good for me something like you know very so. good but um the thing is she does believe she is just yeah. fearful of the unknown she just, uh, sometimes she's not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. She's not been taught if it's good or bad. But since you're doing it, she, she is leaning toward the fact that it is good. And that is a good thing. So she is accepting it, but only in a little bit. She accepts it a little bit of a t at a time. And so mm -hmm. continue to work with her and she will uh, become more receptive. Because the, you do have, I can sense the that you have a lot of healing energy within you. There is a great deal. You also heal from your third eye and your heart and your hands, the fingertips and the, and the wrists and palms. Right. So all these energy areas are ignited and you are close to being able to heal with your eyes, but you're not sure how to do that yet. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to see that like better and better and uh, not the way she is just to use all of my imagination and and do whatever I can do. Like, I mean, I understand that I cannot force anything. I just want her to try and, and try to fight and get straight. Because of who you are, she is accepting it to a some extent. But your, your energies have gotten greater within the last three to six months, it seems. And they have actually uh, grown. I can feel the, the, uh, that you're still getting used to them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, it's a nice one.
почему он решил нам все отвечать на все наши вопросы. Uh, what is your motivation to answer us? What is this? What is your motivation uh, spent him to answer our questions? I love the human race because it is helpful to the, the galaxy. You see, your hybridization is very complete at this point. You have reached an area of hybridization on your planet and an area of communication on your planet where any time now uh, first, first contact could come and you would be united with the galaxy. But first, your governments must agree to it. But we are here to extend that helping hand. And we are working with them as much as possible so that they may accept that we are friendly and that we are welcoming, welcoming, them, welcoming them into our neighborhood. The galaxy is your neighborhood. When it comes right down to it, all the beings that are here in the galaxy are your neighbors. And this is what we are doing. We are extending our hand and helping you as much as we can to overcome your governmental fears, your thought processes of negativity, and become, uh, become friends with us. Um, now, it, it can only happen with the approval of your governments because we can't come and make friends with uh, 10, 10 or 1,000 humans and expect that your governments will accept that. We must come through the governmental portal because they must agree that this is a good idea. They must agree that we are, can work together. I know that we can work together because we are able to work together with so many humans. But at this point, they are afraid of losing their finances, their status, their power. They wish to remain the same way as they are now because they fear that if we come into the picture, they will lose much power, status, and finances. In, uh, on the north, we have about 137 governments. You work with each of them or with some specific government? Did you hear? You I cannot hear. hear. On earth, there is about 137 governments. Do you work with uh, only a few of them or with everyone? We work with most of them, not all of them. Some of them refuse to come to the international meetings that we have. And that is up to them not to come. But we work with all the major governments, probably about 112. They want to, any more? Some of the, is there a question being asked? <clears throat> we, uh, do question? you have a, a hive mind? Uh, do you have a, a collective consciousness, all of the aliens, or how is it? Um, there are some uh, species. Is it, is it, okay. There are some species that have collective consciousness. We do not have a collective consciousness as such, meaning that we are not all collected in one mind and can all think the same thoughts. We are several different species that have come together in an alliance. In that way, we are more of a colony. We are more of a, a conglomeration of people, but we do not have the same mind. We do want to do similar things to help the Earth. We do want to move in similar directions for peace in the galaxy and universe. We do want to move in similar directions for uh, the good of all. But we do not think exactly the same, no. Nor do we speak the same language. There is, however, a galactic language that can be learned and everyone uses that if they cannot um, understand the language of the other species. So therefore, we are making strides to be more of a community, but we are not communal. What's the name of the galactic language? 
Pardon? What is the name of the galactic language of the universe? That is what it's called. In all languages, it is called the galactic language. In our language, it was would be what's your fans? Thank you. Uh, can you describe your appearance, your personal appearance? I'm Yu Yil. I do not know if any of you know what Yu Yils look like, but I'm sort of typical. I I would like to believe that I am better looking than most, but I am short. I'm about four foot tall. Is that it? Four foot three, somewhere in that area in your measurement category. My head is slightly larger than your head, even though my body is a little smaller and a little more frail. Uh, we are in the gray category, but not quite gray. We are more human colored now in the last 10,000 years than we were before. We are evolving toward humanity, and we are the closest DNA-wise to humanity. We're about 97. It depends on the, each individual of us, but it's always at least 97% uh, DNA of humans. Even though our appearances are different, that would only take a tenth of a percent of a piece of DNA to change that. So there are many things still that we are not like humans. There is 3% is actually a huge percent, but still we are closest to human in our DNA makeup. Um, he's a galactic, uh, galactic language. Can you speak this and uh, present us how it sound and uh, in what apparel you using for this language? Can you speak an example of galactic language? I can speak the galactic language, but before I do, let me tell you that it's a, it is made up of many several different languages put together so that no one will feel estranged trying to speak it. Some words were uh, from Yu Yil, some Lyran, some Pleiadian, some Arcturian, etc., and so on. So the galactic language is a conglomerate language. It is a wonderful language, and it, all uh, children, as they grow up, this is one of the languages they must use. There is also a sign language that goes along with the galactic language. This is for those species who do not speak and only use mental thoughts to communicate. If they wanted to communicate with a species that does not have um, the same mental capacity, they would have to use the sign language. So therefore, there is a galactic sign language that goes along with the galactic speech. So let me demonstrate it for you, if you would like. Yes, yes. Please. <laughs> So oma andi verat arata ifis moka kyakirvats san samfarat yo no monia kora. What does it mean? I was saying welcome to the neighborhood. You we would like to tell you that you are part of our lovely community and we welcome you with open arms and with many gifts, but only if you accept us for who we are. What was she saying? Yeah. Ah. Um, any more questions? I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you can help me, just I wanted to ask uh, uh, your advice. Um, for me, what will help me to overcome my health and uh, obstacles uh, in life with relationship and overall health? Uh, I, let me see if I understood the question. What is going to help you overco overcome, overcome your, your obstacles, yeah. obstacles, obstacles and, and be, make peace in your household? Yeah, right. Okay, let me explain something and before health, I... Yes. There was health and household both. Yes. Health and household both? Mm -hmm. All right, very good. 
Let me explain something first before I go into what I, I would like to say. First of all, every one of your peoples and every one of ours as well have free will. So free will causes people to react the way they want to react. And sometimes you cannot change that action, but you can change your own actions in a way that will be an example to them. Now, you see, after so many years, the damage has been done psychologically with some people that they cannot be changed or their thought processes won't easily be changed. So therefore, you must show them the outcome of what you are looking for. You must be the example. It, in many ways, if you were to argue back with someone, that would just be continuing the argument. If you would show some kind of restraint or some kind of love or some kind of different reaction during these times when there are negativities happening, eventually they will calm down because they, most people want someone to fight with. If you don't fight, then you're not any longer in the fight. So that is one thing I'd like to suggest. We have learned also that telepathy, the uh, understanding that you know what other people feel when you come in contact with them, has really helped us to shape how we treat each other. Because if you know that someone's angry when you meet them, or you know that there's going to be a, a conflict, then you avoid it. Because they're going to, if they're telepathic, they will also know that you are in a good frame or whatever. So if you are extremely angry and go out into public when there is telepathic, uh, there is a telepathic environment, you would be assaulting people. Do you understand that? Yeah. You would be going out and you would actually be assaulting anyone that you meet with that anger, with that thing. So what humans have got to learn is control and uh, and how to make positivity the way they lead in, in their lives. You see, you have to lead with positivity. You cannot just come back with negativity when someone gives it to you. But you lead with the positivity. And even if they are angry or still in a negative attitude, you can change the atmosphere of this situation by your positivity. No matter, you cannot be offended. Because remember this, the things that are coming from other people that are striking you and they're accusing you of things, this is their words, their emotions, and their problems. Not yours. You do not have to accept it. You do not have to make it something that makes you angry. You do not have to make that part of who you are. You do not have to accept that they... If they say that you are a liar, if you, they say you, you're lying and you may have lied in the past, that does not mean that you're lying now. And it does not mean that you have to accept that. Just give them back, I am not lying. And you'll have to accept that because it is your positivity that will be the example. But if they want an argument, perhaps you shouldn't say anything. Perhaps you shouldn't interact at that time. But also about health, do you realize if you lessen negativity in the household, the health will go up. The health will go up. There will be less stress, more relaxation, good. You, your body is made so that it takes care of itself many times. Serotonin and many chemicals in the brain are there for a purpose to help you be balanced to help you be, to heal more properly. But these stresses in the homes and negativities and these feuds that come up, they break down these positive things that the body is offering you and cause you to be ill and sick. And you, the greatest thing you can do for a household and health is to be positive and work with positivity because it up, it edifies the body. It brings the body into a healthier state. The Reiki that she is talking about, the energy that you are able to use, 
that each one of you has in differing, differing powers or differing amounts, I should say. I'm not sure what the correct way to say it to you, but the positivity will add health to your life. Now, of course, there are certain things you should eat and should not eat and things that you should do and not do. And I know that you know what those are. So the thing is about all these things is that it must be done with a positive attitude. The intent that health will come about with this attitude and that peace will come about with this attitude because we have learned so much about making peace among ourselves with the way that we approach one another. Our protocols for meeting one another are genuinely friendly, but more than that, they include part of their heritage and part of our own, because we are exchanging that with telepathy, with thought process, and many times empathy. And empathy is a little stronger than te telepathy. Empathy is being able to not only feel what they are feeling emotionally, but to attach to what they are feeling emotionally and bring that uh, and share that in a more intimate way. Now, empathy can also reach in and take out sorrow or sadness or depression out of someone else and bring it into yourself and then bring it out to destroy it so that it won't be part of them. It's, it's actually you're doing some healing to them. Not completely, but you're taking some of their very harsh emotions into yourself and then letting them go. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, well, let's do the last question and then we'll, we'll uh, use the last few minutes to ask uh, an Angelic to come. Yes. Can you travel through space and time? Can we travel through space and time? Yes. Is that the question? Yes. Of course, um, but not the way you think. Um, many times, there are so many different solutions to travel that you have not yet come upon. There is folding time and space. There is actually using wormholes and uh, those kinds of time devices to get from one place to another place very quickly. There's transport. There's transporting through light particles, but the most popular one is vibrational transportation. Um, what many have discovered that, that is every single piece of furniture, uh, every person, every article of clothing, everything that exists has its own precise vibration. Now, having realize that some species have taken that vibration. When you, move, when you are able to capture that perfect vibration, you are able to take it and move it from one place to another. Now, if, it, if you are there and I take your vibration in its complexity, but perfection, and move it from here to there, you cease to exist in this place, and now you exist over here. Many times, this is how space travel is done. They take the vibration of the ship and all the people in it, and they put it into a, a huge mathematical equation, which is then put into a, a technology, and it's taken from here and sent by light vibrations across eons of space, or you can go through a wormhole or whatever you choose to do, but they can take it from here and put it there. It is too dangerous to travel in ships through, through the depths of space. There are pockets of gases. There are pockets of radiation. There are great pockets of things that cannot be passed through. So therefore, if early space travel was that you moved through space as it was, but then some exploded because they hit 
a gas field or they were destroyed by radiation. So the species that travel longest distances, many light years at a time, either fold space, use vibrational transportation, or they use the wormholes. But there is also those that can use dimensional travel. That is a very, very high form of travel, and it's not something that I am, my people are able to do yet. We are only fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. But probably fifth dimensional or sixth dimensional species can learn to do tr uh, dimensional travel, but we have not learned that yet. And can you travel time? Time is, an, is something that we are not allowed to travel. Let me tell you why. There are such things as timekeepers. And the reason for these people is to make sure that no one is moving in time because it can change the future. If you go back in time and you change a particular and important series of events, then it will show throughout all eternity that there is a change, especially for that planet or that solar system or that galaxy. So time travel is only permitted for certain reasons and for certain uses. It is not just something that is used arbitrarily. Thank you. I would like, uh, thank you very much. It was very helpful and uh, it was the first contact for many, uh, for everybody here. Uh, would, I would like to invite an Angelic to speak next. We have another 20 minutes. Very well. Thank it you. was very nice speaking to all of you. I hope that I was able to uh, speak to you in a way that was understandable. I will talk to you again some other time. Very much love to you and I hope that you become our neighbors very soon. Thank you. Um, it is recorded, so if people didn't understand the English, they could re re listen again. Thank you. Very well. Much love. Much love. Greetings. I am Michael. Uh, hello. We are here um, uh, mostly speaking Russian, but I will translate if needed. Um, can you give us a blessing as an introduction? A blessing? Yes, I will give it to you in the angelic language. Is that all right? Absolutely. Mia Karawa. Adonai, for sure, the Afon de Afata Aliara, who would he see from shore, Shoshia Friate from Akara. Will you see a sa, Safunia Turua, or a sea? May God's light always shine upon you and be beautiful in all of your eyes. He is the one you must look for, for strength, guidance and for handling all the right things in your life. He brings love, health, beauty, wisdom, and guidance. May he always be with you. Shuria Parintita. Mashun Sephoria. Thank you. And may he be with you forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. So, questions to Archangel Michael? Um, do you have DNA? And is, it, is your DNA similar to ours? No. We were a created species. We were created in another realm for another reason. However, when we come to your realm, we do become like humans, and we do have the same kind of DNA, because we must interact with you in a human way. So we take on a human form to come to you. Thank you. We 
Do you see the future? We can see it to a small extent, but remember this. God made everyone an individual, and they can change their mind. So the future is not all that clear, especially in this day and age, because people are being swayed, and people are changing their minds. But there are certain people that will not be swayed and will not change their minds, and those are the ones we look to to actually gaze upon that part of the future, and it usually comes out the right way, unless they're influenced by these others. Does everyone, uh, does every human have an, a keeper, a, an angel keeper? Every human has their own angel, yes. There is one created for every human, and this is to keep them alive until they are not to be alive anymore. That is their main goal, to protect. So that will be very different from spirit guides. Yes. An angel is there. Do you realize that there are situations where a car will be going down the road, and all of a sudden it's pulled, pulled out of the way of an accident? You've heard these stories, haven't you? Yes. And those are the angels at work because they are protecting those that must stay alive. So you said an angel is created for everyone or they are reused? So can, is one angel after the death of the human goes to another human? That is possible. But they can follow the same soul if they wish. I see. Contact with your angel. Did you hear how to get a contact with an angel, with your own angel? There are ways for humans to contact their angels, but it's it's not easy because they are not there to be talked to. But if there is a reason that is a necessity to talk to your angel, they will speak to you. Uh, what is the process? How does the angel keeper help the human? Is, is uh, the angel keeper uh, helps to make a decision or otherwise? The angel keeper only protects. They do not help with decisions except for life and death or protection decisions. If they need to protect you, they will. Oh, uh, we just couldn't remember any uh, Greek, uh, any angels in Greek mythology. Who would, they, uh, who would, which beings in Greek mythology would correspond to the angels? Actually, the angels were not written about in Greek mythology. They were oh, mostly aliens that were written about in Greek mythology. However, angels did help. As spirits, those that were, they sensed that they were gods and they were great creatures. So angels had no reason to be around them because they would not admit that they were, angels even existed because they looked at themselves as gods. So we did not really hang around the Greek mythology or Roman mythology characters. They were more alien than they were spiritual. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, I have a friend. Uh, I think um, you might know her, Katya uh, Kilikovskaya, Afonina Rom, and she is recovering from her sickness. I invite uh, your healing towards her. We will be with her. Thank you. We know of all illnesses. There are some that can be cured and others that are meant to be because they are meant to come to the light at a particular time. Now, there are some illnesses that are caused by other things that are not of the light. And some people 
are extinguished a little early. And there's nothing to, an angel can do about an illness. They can protect you from knives, cars, fire, many, many things. But they cannot, can, they cannot protect you from yourself in some ways. If you bring upon illness upon yourself, they cannot stop that. Is it the case for Katya? Katya is where she needs to be at this time. Thank you. Any more things? Uh, what's your predictions about the Third World War? <laughs> The Third World War, it could happen or it could not. But it, in my opinion, the future looks very dire. What is dire? Bad? Yes, it's not good. Thank you. But I cannot tell you of, of my predictions because they are not founded on what is going to happen. I see. You see, the things that are going to happen, I do not quite know yet. And that will tell me if the war will be there or not. But in my opinion, it looks like it will be there. But that is only an opinion. Thank you. Um, there is a kind of uh, mediumship where you use a plate which moves around the letters. Uh, which forces are moving this plate? Like, I think it's called like something like digital board or plate yeah, moving yeah, or things. Digital board. If you're using um, equipment like this, then you are not calling on divine spiritual help. You are just calling for any spirit to answer the question that is around. And so you may get a neutral spirit, a positive spirit, or in many cases, a negative spirit because it's an opportunity. Any more questions? How do you see God? What's your, can you uh, give us some image of God? What's, uh, what's the best perception of God? God cannot be seen with just one vision. God is an ever-changing creature of energy, light, and sources. When you look at God, you're looking at the brightness of the universe. You're also looking at every change that is happening in the universe and every bit of energy that was ever created. So therefore, when you look at God, you may see one thing one moment, and that will change every, every nanosecond, because he is never the same, but always the same in power and energy, but never looking the same. Uh, are angels... In eternal? Yes, unless they choose otherwise. Angels have free will as well. If we choose to become human, we will live out a human life. If we choose to become Pleiadian, we will live out a Pleiadian life. If we choose to go into a dark matter or into a darkness, into a, something that is not of the light, then we will live out our existence there for the lifetime of whatever that is. But as angels, we are eternal. If you go and live a life of a human, then you become, you go into an incarnation cycle? I did not hear that question. If you choose to live a life of a human, do you then become caught in an incarnation cycle? Yes, we go to the Oversoul after our passing. If we choose to become an, a, a human, then we live human life and we pass into the human 
afterlife. Thank you. When the new humans are born, where from the, the souls come for the new humans because there is more and more humans, and where from are the angel keepers coming from? <coughs> I don't think I understood that question entirely. The, the, humanity, the numbers of humanity population grows exponentially. Uh, yeah. Where from the souls come and angel keepers come? Yes. The angels are created. And the souls, where from the souls to the new human comes. God puts his fire into every soul. In every single soul that exists, there is a part of God. For he and alone can create life the way it should be. If you create life in a test tube, it may not have that fire with it. But when God creates a life within a being, and within an egg or within a womb, it is of God, and that is a creation. <coughs> I think we are, we are running out of time. I invite a blessing, and um, I will let you go. One moment. The human body needed the water. Vriya soshun sevya Adonai kwachi shwan sila. Hallelujah karaviya safashon davati. Kunuti safota. And siyashun sandyam vyant. Aurora tashun sivya tatwa. Fura, and sure, if the engine was you, and she seemed the water confounded. Toria Tasha, on Vocordia Vesentia Titurtet. May God bless you and keep you and shine his light upon you and make your way and pathways bright with opportunities and abundance. May you always be in touch with God and your Creator, for He is interested in who you are, your health and your well-being, although you may not believe it to be so. He is with you at all times. There is no place in the universe without the essence of God within it. Be well and learn to love one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. It was very helpful. Your energy is wonderful. Thank you. I love each and every one of you. Be blessed. Be blessed. Hello. Hey, Jean. Welcome back. Hi. How are you? Oh, we're good. Yeah. For, for many, it was a, a new experience. It so was different. Yeah. I felt my back was kind of feeling the energies of um, mix, mixed, uh, mixed energies. So okay. I, I had to breathe and drink and kind of survive that. But otherwise, it was good. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you very it much. Was I felt a lot of mixed energies too, but that's fine. This is always good, really. Thank you. I, I will let you go and we will discuss what we heard. All right, very good. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. It was nice to see you. Nice All right. to see you. All right, bye. Bye-bye.